Evening, everyone. Welcome to The Next Revolution. We are pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and especially pro-America. Right. It is barely a month away. In fact, because in many places we now have this ludicrous election month instead of election day, the midterms are, in fact, just days away. Now, I'm not a polling guy, but I am a politics guy. I've been involved in elections one way or another all over the world for over 30 years. And here's what I know for a fact. At this stage, it is not about persuasion. It is about setting the agenda and turning out the vote. It's too late to persuade people you're tough on crime if they think you're soft on crime. It's too late to persuade them your policy is reasonable if they already think it's extreme. What you can do is influence the agenda, what is front of mind for voters as they make their choice. In the jargon, at this stage, you can affect the salience of different issues, but not your ratings on the issues. Based on that and what I see happening in the campaigns, here are my predictions as of tonight. For the House, my current estimate is the Republicans will make a net gain of 15 seats. The good news is that's enough for a majority, enough to take the chair of the committees and get those investigations going of Biden and Fauci. But it's less than others are predicting. Now, partly that's because House Republicans actually did a great job of winning seats in 2020. But mainly it's because of the moronic political malpractice of one man, Lindsey Graham, who with his totally unnecessary and intellectually incoherent national abortion bill has helped the Democrats do exactly what they need, raise the salience of the one issue where they have the biggest lead over Republicans and which most helps them turn out their vote. For the Senate, I'm a little more optimistic. Remember how high the stakes are here. Democrats have made it clear that if they gain just two seats, they will abolish the filibuster. But I don't think that's going to happen. For the Senate, it's about the candidates as well as the issues. And here's my estimate as of tonight, what's probable and what's possible. It's not a comprehensive list, just the key races where I think many of the pundits might be getting it wrong. The Democrats seem to think they can flip Ohio and Wisconsin, but I don't see that happening. I am very confident J.D. Vance and Ron Johnson will win. I'm confident Herschel Walker will win in Georgia. That is a Republican flip. That would be huge. And I'm pretty confident Dr. Oz will put out a win too in Pennsylvania. Beyond those, there are some really exciting possibilities for Republicans to flip enough Democrat seats to actually gain a solid Senate majority. Adam Laxalt in Nevada, the fantastic Tiffany Smiley in Washington. How amazing would that be? And maybe even Joe O'Day in Colorado. These are all great candidates running exactly the right races for their state. But of course, all of this depends on you and on every American who wants change from the Democrat disasters to actually make sure they vote. But you know what? There is, in fact, one more race we should keep an eye on. If you think a Republican win in Washington state would be an earthquake, how about Vermont, home of Bernie Sanders? Don't write it off completely. The Democrat running to replace retiring octogenarian Senator Patrick Leahy is this man, Peter Welch, who's been Vermont's at-large congressman for the past 15 years. Of course, in his campaign, he's trying to make out he's a man of the people, palling around with Bernie and all that. But wait a minute, Peter Welch. How exactly did you amass a multi-million dollar net worth despite earning a congressional salary of $174,000 a year? Oh, look, turns out Peter Welch invested in healthcare companies benefiting from a major health care law that he pushed. And those same companies shoveled nearly $80,000 into his campaign coffers. On top of that, he traded between $215,000 and over half a million dollars worth of pharmacy stock while the legislation was pending. Not so much single payer, a single payout for Peter Welch. But the corruption doesn't end there. He invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in tech funds, all while sitting on the Communications and Technology Committee, which directly affected those investments. His family invested in the oil and gas industry, even as he railed against fossil fuels. In fact, last year, he was found to have violated the Stock Act, a bill which he co-sponsored. And unbelievably, the violation was about the sale of Exxon stock and happened days before Welch laid into the Exxon CEO during a congressional hearing on climate. So while Peter Welch wants voters to think he's some Patagonia-wearing Vermont liberal eating Ben & Jerry's ice cream while going on a hike and shaking his fist at the sky cursing climate change, he really is just the same old cynical, corrupt, hypocritical Washington insider using his public office 
for his own private gain. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.